Well, welcome to our webinar today, Reduce IT Service Desk Costs 10 to 20% or More. And um, I'm your host, Mike Zuckerman, and I'll overview briefly our agenda for you. We're going to spend at most an hour, depending on the demo and questions, and uh, we'll try to get through the PowerPoint uh, very quickly, as PowerPoint is a known uh, evil uh, for most of us in terms of time consumption. Uh, we'll have a demo by our Senior Director of Systems Engineering, Ilya Epstein, and you'll be able to see some of the new technologies, I think, that create the impact that we speak about. Um, today, the agenda is really uh, what you would expect in part, and many things you did not expect to hear about. So, of course, there's a little bit on us, but we're going to introduce you to data that you've never seen before. And it's really quite striking. Most of the companies out there, 99 plus percent, are not implementing these sorts of technologies and they're not realizing the benefits and the impact that could be positive for their IT service desk, functional support, and uh, related operations. We're going to frame the opportunity for you, show you how to reach out and grab it, tell you a little bit about the status quo, uh, the incremental opportunities, and then take you through with specificity how we're going to impact help desk operations and make a huge change. In the help desk world, the IT service desk world, the functional support world, where costs can run from $10, $20 an hour to several hundred, depending upon what phase of the problem you're solving, small impacts can net huge results. Vendor products that drive half a percent efficiency here or there in a call center are considered remarkable because in aggregate, the cost reductions are quite high. Most of our customers, big customers, um, dozens and dozens of them are saving in excess of a million or two dollars or euros a year every year in hard operating benefit and we'll show you specific examples of these customer savings and tell you how to get there. This is not a technology by the way that you wake up in the morning to buy. In your operations you may expand or build a new division and say I'm gonna wake up today and buy a piece of IT service desk software or I'm going to acquire 10 more copies of Microsoft Office, or I'm going to buy some RAID drives. This is a technology that's new. And so it's generally driven by business case because most of the market isn't aware of it. The market for this technology set is under half a billion a year. So while the savings and benefits are remarkable in terms of impact to IT service, most people don't know about it. So you, you drive a business case to get it done. And of course, the most important point is how do you reach IT service desk nirvana? And then we'll, we'll show the product and answer questions. Um, NOAA, as, as most of our audience probably knows, is a leader in user experience management. And what makes our product most interesting to customers is our extensions in the area of user performance management, which is really about business process efficiency. Um, we're in 20% of the Fortune 50, hundreds of global customers around the world. Uh, we just opened our office in France and had a wonderful reception at the U.S. Embassy and business is going great. Uh, we're sold around the world by SAP uh, on their price list as one of their products called SAP UEM by NOAA. And of course, we bring products to other markets like Oracle and, and so on and so forth. Uh, many customers to talk about, perhaps another day, but all the name brands you'd expect to see. Um, really, the opportunity wraps itself around what kind of data you have access to and when you start to get a sense of that opportunity, then you start to see new insights and powerful implications you can leverage. Everything in your data center, whether you're a small firm, a mid-tier firm, or a large multinational firm, is, is really focused on the networks, the storage, the processors. Your IT team is pretty good. They have a lot of tools to measure these things. And they may not be happy with them in aggregate, but they do the job and they, and they meet the performance at level of expectation most of the time. It turns out that the greatest value realization you can achieve where the IT service desk is in fact closest is the user at the desktop. And basic uh, enterprise uh, you know, user experience management helps you measure the infrastructure to the point of the desktop. And our special extensions also help you measure the performance of the user and business processes. And when you combine this data, you start to reach some very striking conclusions. And this data really frames your opportunity to see a lot of things that you couldn't see before. And when you see this, you'll say, well, why isn't anyone doing that? Well, because no one has taken the time to do this. 
and didn't recognize the opportunity. Someone always has to be first and second for any new capability. So how is this going to impact my IT service desk? And the question that I ask, um, you know, most of our CIOs or most of our IT managers when I meet them or IT service desk managers, directors, VPs, wherever you fit in that world is just what's your average percent of, of error? You know, you've got system error and you've got business performance or user error. And how do those two things compare? Now, most of the time people don't know the answer. Everyone is very familiar with system error because all that stuff is instrumented. So they can pretty much tell you that we have X hundreds of system error problems a day. Some are reported by our APM tools and some come into our IT service desk. But they are not seeing the other half of the world. The other half of the world, in fact, that we find when we instrument a new account before we remediate and help work the issues through with the IT service desk team, shows that about 91% of all errors are invisible to the IT organization completely. Invisible to the IT service desk other than as a few of them are called in. And probably of this 91%, about one in eight are reported, one in nine are reported at some point in time to IT service. So we'll come back to this, but because we give you visibility to the 91%, and correlate it with desktop performance for the 8.4%. Every single IP, exactly what are they experiencing, right down to the time it takes to build out their thick client. You, you just start to have data that was not accessible before, and it starts to be able to drive problem solutions that you could never imagine before. Now, the way this works is pretty much as an analytics framework. It all comes up in an analytics dash, and it shows you other views of the enterprise. You, you certainly have many of these today and you have them for your performance, for your processors, your network. Now you have them for each physical application at the desktop right down to the time it takes to fill that screen. Every transaction, every button, if you talked about SAP for example which is predominant across the world as a, as a mainstream enterprise application whether it's ERP or HR or whatever you're doing um, Every single thing in that world is instrumented. Even the custom transactions will fall in automatically, right? So this analytics dashboard doesn't get set up a transaction at a time, which could take you, you know, dozens of years and probably cost thousands of lives, right? It, it's out of the box, and, and here's all of this data that now becomes actionable. And this data now enables you to solve the help desk and functional support problems that can drive big cost reduction. And the biggest issue is, if you think about it, someone calls and you've got to document their problem. You've got to understand their problem. You've got to be able to repeat the problem so that, you know, duplicate that problem so that you can address it and remediate it. And all of those phone calls, all of that time takes a toll on you, on your customers, and in general on customer satisfaction. People hate to be interrogated. And so the, the value drivers start to be fairly clear metrics. And it's not about reducing the spend in your IT service desk. I mean, come on, we're not trying to cut out 20% of our paychecks. We're trying to be much more efficient and effective so that we can scale the organization better to accommodate the needs that we have. And then the real payback will be in proactive service. So this easy efficiency, the 10 to 20% we talk about, that is the easiest, simplest part to achieve. And it's because when you look at this dashboard, you will see every single system error that user has experienced. So let's say they're using Siebel CRM or SAP um, ERP. You will see every system error they experienced, every user error by type and category, and even master data errors, which kind of look like user errors till you can see where the problem started. We show you all of that. So at your help desk today, you may say, well, we had 1,200 calls, but when you, when you look at this dashboard, you'll see there's 10,000 errors of which only 1,200 were reported. And we'll come back to that. So you can see all of this stuff. You can also see the workflow that the user had. There's a compacted version of the workflow built into the system. So someone calls, you can immediately see what they were doing the last half hour. And if they reference a problem two days ago, you can see 
roughly at that time, what were they doing? What errors were they experiencing? So the time to diagnose is reduced. The time to document is reduced. The time to reproduce is reduced. And if it does go to functional support, they have everything they need to document it easily and send it to the vendor. So it's a very, very big change. Now, the real payback in this is to scale up IT service to a new level of capability. The real payback is to move IT service desk and functional support to the strategic corner of the enterprise. We have customers that are saving that have projected to me a major uh, top 100 pharmaceutical that they will save between 8 to 10 million in 2012 because of the capabilities of this reporting technology because it enables them to now see problems and target them for resolution. Well, you'd say, well, what exactly are you talking about, right? When someone calls your desk, let's pick the worst thing we can think of, change management. Change management, the people that do UAT and the, and the IT organization that runs the new release out, they tell everyone it's under control, we've tested it, we feel good, we won't have too many problems, but we'll have our hypercare window for 30 days. Don't worry, it's under control. The IT service desk knows that's a proxy for worry. It's not under control, and the first 30 days are going to show us all kinds of things that we never anticipated. Surprise, surprise, you guys know. A new release means twice as much work and a lot of upset people out there. Well, as it turns out, when someone calls your desk, you can look at that user problem. They can't figure out how to do that transaction anymore. Or they're not saving the data. They think the system lost their transaction, but they're not saving it right. And you can say, show me everybody that's having this user problem in North America, around the world, with the title director in our Des Moines office uh, that has the title with the word customer in it, that has this kind of you know, other filter that you could apply based upon, you know, maybe 10 or 20 parameters you might have in LDAP, right? And you can really drill down through the analytics and see immediately. So what you can see is every problem that's unreported and slice them and dice them and then make decisions to proactively attack them. This substantially changes the world of IT service. It moves you into a strategic position in the company because when you measure the value of those unsolved problems, it's millions and millions of dollars. And right now, the CIO and the line of business execs have a vague understanding of it, but no quantitative, clearly defined view of what that's costing them. So think about it. You've got an analytics dashboard, and you can see today around the world that in your new release, this is the first week, you're having about 1,200 user errors a day on this wonderful new custom transaction. Everybody said it was going to work great, but guess what? It's confusing people. And those 1,200 errors are consuming about 16 minutes on average, but you can take the actual numbers. And you can allocate data. You can put in a model salary figure, or you can take actual data depending upon your organization and the permissions you have and the privacy laws you have to you know, con uh, conform to. And you can see that it's cost us Good grief, $42,000 the last 24 hours on a global basis for all of the managers and people that are suffering with this transaction because we have 43,000 users running SAP ERP and they are stuck on this problem. And, and now you can start to prioritize those problems based upon either functional impact to the organization or economic impact. It's just a very different way of looking at things. You could say if a problem comes up and impacts more than X users, um, and it you know given these parameters, it's 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 a it's a it's a parameter driven alert. Send an email to the help desk so we generate a problem report. So this really changes the world. Now, the customer that's saving you know eight to ten million is doesn't even have the IT service desk in-house. It's been outsourced. And their IT service desk people spend their time working on proactive support to minimize what they send to the outsourcer to keep that external cost down, the shared services, and to really drive benefits. So IT service with this proactive support moves into an incredibly strategic role in the organization and, and makes a big difference. And so you're able to see across this whole enterprise world, you're able to slice and dice by attribute, and you're able to analyze problems, isolate them, 
understand who they're impacting, report it or not, everything in that major app, and then you're able to see, perhaps, if you want to, you can model the financial impact to decide how you want to solve it. We have customers that pick off problems like this every quarter forever, one, two, three, and they document it. They show they just saved the organization $312,000 because they've improved the efficiency. And they can measure the impact of the steps they took to remediate it. You can see exactly how that changes user performance, right? So it's not just about infrastructure performance, it's about user performance, and these things are holistic. And that's really what's new here, is that no one's ever had a dash to that data and been able to leverage it. And so the value drivers for proactive service are huge. Um, you're way ahead of things. You've raised the value prop for IT service. The companies that have really figured this out are breaking out groups called user performance management. And um, it really drives back to the self-service, the targeted training, the user acceptance testing, the change management, and even application adoption on the line of business. In the final analysis, you're helping the line of business users realize the full value of their application investment. If you've got 1,000 users or 5,000 users, you've probably spent millions with a consultancy doing customization. You have a huge investment in that ERP system, but how do you really know how you're doing? How do you know how you compare to others in terms of performance? And, and how do you know you're getting your, your money out of it and that users are adopting it right and doing it in a compliant and reasonable way? And now you can see all of that, right? You can see all of that. You can measure it. You can measure it before and after, and it uncovers a potential pot of gold that's been completely invisible both to the line of business and IT service. So it's a really, really exciting development. I'm going to show you a lot of the ROIs very shortly and you'll see just study after study of savings. And these are most of these are North American companies, so you'll be surprised. Um, these are the kinds of returns that we see at the very basic level for just attacking the problems in the help desk. And you know, if, if you have scale, this works really, really well. Um, we have customers that um, have told us, one in Singapore that's saving a million and a half uh, pounds uh, a year in hard operating benefit because their, their coral centers have several hundred people in it, and um, it's a big deal for them. If you look at customers that we have in North America, customers like Kraft Foods um, have experienced benefits across the board, reduction in support tickets, all sorts of things. Uh, uh, faster time for resolution, the end users are performing better and they can measure it. So that's a big success with lots of, you know, lots of users uh, utilizing the technology. Uh, McKesson is a, uh, a very successful pharmaceutical on the West Coast uh, and, and a healthcare uh, services company. And, um, you know, they have also experienced benefits across the board. And, and, and notice also that they've been able to impact training because remediation for problems if you really think about it on a broad scale, is also about targeted training. Most training programs today don't seem to be very targeted. They do the same thing over and over. And now you can see by user, by cluster, by group, by title, by geography, by transaction type, who's doing it really well and who's taking the longest, who's having the most errors. And then you can, you can do something to, to fix that. So just lots of cost savings and, and benefit there for you. This is an example of an actual return on investment analysis, and these numbers are somewhat mind-boggling. You know, we went in and started with just what it takes to, you know, solve some of the issues in IT support, and as the savings started to fall out, people were amazed, so they brought in the analysis to other areas. They invited other people in, and this was the benefit that they saw on a conservative basis. These are big numbers. Uh, this is another one we did. And it starts out with the help desk usually because the help desk is sort of the tip of the spear. You guys are on the, the front line when it comes to user performance. And to the extent you can't instrument it, you guys still have to deal with it, right? Those spears come over the wall and you've got to catch them and, and break them, right? And, and then that analysis drove a lot of other introspection across uh, the IT service team and line of business. And this was their, their business case. Um, here are others. Customer three, right? Um, you can see that this customer went to uh, positive cash flow pretty much, you know, out the chute. You can see how fast that happened. Um, same thing for this next customer. And I believe this one was just focused on targeted training. That's all they wanted to do. And, the, and just the cost of training and all the things that were wrapped up in that organization were huge. 
Um, this customer, what do you know? I've, I've got two customer fours. This is customer five. You can see another set of actual cash flow benefits. Right, so this one's in, in euros. And uh, again, you know, just tremendously strong benefits associated with the project. And then finally, uh, should be our last customer. And, and all I'm really doing here is clipping from the ROI analyses that were done, and there were many of them. In, in many of these scenarios, these were done uh, in conjunction with SAP's value engineering team. Um, so they help us do the ROIs. They have a very sophisticated approach. But you can see all of the benefits are just huge. So the question for you is, well, what do I need to do to get involved? And the answer is, when you look at the technology, I think immediately your IT team and line of business will recognize data they've never seen before. And then the acid test for you is, okay, show me the money. It's 2012. It's it's the aftermath of 2008. Build an ROI and show that my organization can save a million or more a year. And that's the catalyst for getting people involved in getting the project off the ground. It, one of these large companies we deal with, our technology is the baseline of their user performance management capability, which is the pet project for the CIO. And from his perspective, a secret weapon in terms of managing the enterprise. He knows about every problem every issue before anyone should have to call and I can tell you most of his peers don't have that luxury usually they're hearing about problems from their users first uh, as opposed to the infrastructure that they have in place so the technology you know the question comes up well well tell us exactly what this stuff is and how it works and it's pretty simple the baseline capability connects to all of the core enterprise applications so if you run SAP Pretty much everything you do, NetWeaver, Portal, GUI, online, offline, virtualized through Citrix, business objects itself, right? And we also report in business objects. So your data is there. Um, CRM, you know, whatever you have pretty much. And all of the custom transactions are automatically integrated if they follow SAP's framework. So, so 99% of the tools you have in your IT data center, you have to script to transactions and do this manually. If you had to do this with, a, with an alternate technology and even try to do what we do, you'd spend half your life scripting things that would be out of date before you finish getting it up and in production. So all this connection is automatic. Then the analytics, because it has all the data, every transaction, every screen, every button, everything a user could do right or wrong, right? And the performance of the infrastructure at that desktop, how quick is their response time? When they tell you they have a performance problem, you can see exactly what their response time is screen by screen at that workstation. Almost nothing in the data center does that either. And so the analytics now lets you discover the opportunities. It either helps you in the IT service desk address and remediate a problem, or it helps you, you know, proactively see huge opportunities that no one knows about. Most of what you see in this dashboard has been invisible. No one has been able to see this kind of data before. So it's a big change. And finally, manage. Now that you have all this data, you can start to attack the problems. And then you can immediately and objectively measure how you did. So it's, it's pretty substantial. The politically savvy teams we work with um, tend to, to use these tools on a quarterly basis. And at the end of every quarter, they go to the CIO, they go to the line of business, and they say, we just saved $380,000 this quarter, or $212,000, or $600,000. And they deliver this analysis and take their bow. And I would submit in 2012, what a better project than this to be associated with, to be saving the corporation money. Um, the, the visibility here is both to application performance. So a lot of what traditional tools see, except it's at the desktop level, desktop by desktop, and it's not just HTTP streams, it's GUI, it's portals, it's Citrix virtualized, it's online, it's offline, because big enterprises do not just run through HTTP streams. And, and the fact that you may have tools that measure some of that stuff, I guarantee you most of them do not measure how long it takes before the screen is built out. They don't measure that. And that can be the difference between a second or two and users screaming at you or not. One of the big areas you'll find huge benefit here is for service level agreement. This is the only technology that will truly let you measure an accurate service level agreement. 
And we're finding that most of our customers, when you, you even ask the question, they're traumatized by it because it's never been a resolved issue. And now you can start to objectively mediate between IT, the service desk, and the customer to say, look, the system didn't lose your save. You never saved it right because we can see your workflow. But yes, over in your department, your network um, seems to be running fast, but your desktop to fill in that browser is taking two seconds longer. So you are right, it is too slow. And the answer is, Mr. Customer, how many other browser windows do you have open? Do you have a memory leak in your system? You know, we have other tools that let you see, you know, what people are running. And sometimes those desktops just have too many browsers open to Amazon or the news or whatever. It's just human nature. But you can see all of those things. So all of the infrastructure at the desktop, which is unique, and the user apps execution, which is absolutely unique, transaction by transaction. And, and this is brought up in a dashboard where you have a lot of specific components that you can leverage with the analytics. It's analytics, so it comes right out of business objects or maybe MicroStrategy um, or maybe you know Oracle uh, BI in a couple months. And it's immediately flexibly used because data in BI frameworks can be used in an infinite number of ways by you. To, to leverage the value of the data. Um, in terms of, you know, how does it come together, the best thing you need to know is that our architecture, NOAA 1, um, does not touch any of the back-end systems. So, you're, you know, so there's, there's no interaction with your back-end production systems, zero. We use an agent on the desktop, which has been deployed in, in uh, my technical count is SCADI 8 million places. It's very small, less than 1% of the horsepower of the desktop. And that's how it knows exactly what the timings are and knows exactly what's happening in the system. So it's it's very fast. It's scalable. It's highly automated. Uh, there's nothing to script or wire. And all the data shows up in your standard uh, BI environment. So if you're running an application like BMC Remedy, people, most of our customers do that. They take data from our system, paste it right into BMC to, to generate quick response and accurate documentation of issues. And, and those links are getting automated over time. So, you know, you'll be able to set up an alert and have it show up in your remedy system or your other service desk system. And other technologies that are very important to the market are things like SAP Soulman. That's another very fine capability um, and, and one which we, uh, you know, integrate with and, and, and coexist with very happily. So let's take this to the end here, right before the demo. And really, two slides that really summarize the picture for you in the IT service world. This is probably how your world looks today. Someplace in IT, right, there are a million tools measuring the performance of the infrastructure and telling you how things look to your users, even though they don't look that way to the users exactly. And the front line, for what's really happening is IT service desk and functional support, maybe the center of excellence, because you guys get the pounding from the customer when things don't look right. And most of the time, most of the problems you hear about, especially with change management, are absolutely not anticipated. They could test it till the cows come home, as we say, and it doesn't make a difference, right? So when you ask this team, what's happening in your global enterprise today? They say, well, we've got 1,200 bugs today, and about 400 will be system error. Uh, we've had 200 APM alerts, and the rest will probably turn out to be user error over the next week or two. The, the more modern view of the world, if you use this technology today, is that you can see at every desktop the specific performance of every application, screen by screen, module by module, button by button. And you know, if someone says, what's the state of your enterprise? There are 11,000 errors today in my enterprise. 1,200 of these errors have been reported to the IT service desk. And of these errors, there are seven new errors that are significant and have emerged and are costing us about 80,000 lost productivity per day, which we are targeting proactively. And you can see objectively how application adoption is going. Who's using the applications for what? You can see objectively how the rollout is going for the new release. Is change management working? Objectively, how did user acceptance testing go? And, and objectively, how to target and deliver training and then measure the results afterwards. So this is the state of the union today. Less than 1% of the companies out there are doing this. It has huge ROI and potential. 
And this is the value that a user experience management tool can bring with the extensions for user performance or business process performance management. So uniquely, we extend that visibility to, to share data you've never seen. The ROI across major business cases can be very substantial. And at the very least, we can roll up our sleeves, take your existing process and make it run a lot better and help you save 10, 20% off your costs and really let your team scale up. So with that, I'm going to um, turn the session over to Ilya Epstein, our Director for Systems Engineering. And um, Ilya will take you through the demo and then some of the question and answer. So as Mike has indicated, uh, no solution is unique in that we're leveraging a desktop-based agent to really fully understand the end user experience. The agent is a passive uh, monitoring technology that understands everything the user is doing within the target application, including SAP, SIBO, and others. Um, all of the data from the NOAA agent is sent to a centralized NOAA server, uh, which, could, which resides within the customer's data center or within a cloud. Um, and then all of that data is exposed through a set of analytics, dashboards, reports, workflows, uh, that allows uh, the end users to take actionable uh, steps to be able to perform their tasks in the different solution sets and, and within the different stakeholders, whether it's the application support, whether it's training or any other user sustainability and application sustainability function. Um, as well, um, lines of businesses are uh, turning to NOAA to actually try to improve their major KPIs and we're seeing more and more use cases in that area. Today we'll focus uh, more about, uh, on the uh, support uh, aspects of how NOAA is used in the application support area. Um, what's interesting is that it's not just about you know the, the help desk or you know even level two and three support. Um, increasingly, we're seeing um, companies deploy NOAA in, in user sustainability programs within COEs or within super user programs to allow um, those areas to actually help remediate problems with the users in a proactive manner and actually reduce the overall ticket count in the formal support organization. So that's an important aspect to keep in mind. Um, there are two major use cases of how our solution is used in the support area. The first one is what we call the service 2.0 uh, support organization, the ability to be proactive for the first time. So instead of waiting for the users to report issues, you are able to, for the first time, because you're monitoring your entire enterprise and user population, you're able to see in real time all of the users that are experiencing performance problems that are causing real work stopping issues. So for example, if we look at this user support dashboard, you could see all of the users that are using the uh, target application. In this example, we're looking at an SAP application. And you can see some major KPIs, including response time, system errors, and user errors. Now, it's important to just uh, step back and, and, and understand that the response time, as Mike has indicated, that NOAA provides is truly unique. Um, this is a true end-to-end -end response metric for any operation that is performed within the target application. So, for example, here we're looking at an SAP solution. Um, and we're looking at sub several transactions, like custom Z transaction, for example, here Z I A T, and you can see this transaction has multiple operations, including execute, print, save, and so forth. And for each one of these, we're able to pinpoint where the users are struggling. So, for example, here the user is waiting six minutes while he's clicking on the execute button in this transaction. And this is truly unique in that this metric is a cumulative end-to-end response metric, which includes the backend server time, includes the network time, it includes even the desktop rendering time. So when organizations now want to understand what the users are truly feeling, what are they experiencing, what is that objective response time, there's no more need to uh, you know, collect uh, various types of logs from various endpoints. You actually have a true metric available from the user's desktop. Um, when it comes to errors, no is also very unique in that not only do we report on you know, system and user errors, but we're actually able to pinpoint it to a specific 
transaction or a business process. So we can tell you exactly within which transaction the users are experiencing the problem. And we could actually go even further. We could even go on a screen level. Um, that allows you to quickly isolate the problem and quickly start the remediation instead of trying to you know, figure out exactly where the users are experiencing the issue. Um, when it comes to user errors, you can see here, um, NOAA is absolutely unique in the market in that we're covering 100% of all the users' errors within any transaction, within any module of any target application. So whether the users are having a training problem because they're uh, executing the, the process in an incorrect manner, or perhaps there are some data issues, like a master data problem uh, that is causing a work stopping issue. All of those are covered 100%, and there's no need for any type of scripting, uh, coding. Um, if you've added custom screens or custom processes uh, to your application, all of those errors are captured 100%. Um, and that's a major uh, aspect to, in terms of the ROI and in terms of the time to value. Uh, with a NOAA solution. Um, similarly, I want to show you another uh, interesting view in, in trying to be proactive, and that is the, the power of analytics and the power of aggregation. So in most organizations that we speak to, most of the support organizations, they're very reactive and they're just working on a ticket-by-ticket -ticket basis. And they don't have that holistic global view as to what are my top issues, what are the top errors that the users are experiencing right now? What are the top issues that the users have experienced during the last month end or the last quarter end? Um, and there's just no time or ability to do any of those analytics. And the reason why that is important is that if you understand issues that are impacting a high number of users or are happening many times over and over again, and you could address them and remove them from circulation, you will have a direct impact to your support cost. And that's why companies that are successfully using NOAA in that proactive manner are able to take 30, 50% of common user-related user issues and remove them from circulation and actually free up resources in the support uh, teams. So here you have an example. Uh, we're looking at top 10 user errors. Uh, and some system errors within the enterprise. And you can see for each issue exactly how many users are experiencing it, everything from material issues, memory problems, authorization issues. You have here 69 users experiencing authorization issues 488 times. With a NOAA solution, you could quickly drill down. You could actually identify who those users are. Um, now, also, you could notice here that we're monitoring all of the SAP instances, for example, whether it's production, whether it's a uh, testing environment without ever touching the back-end SAP application. And that's extremely important. Uh, that's what makes the NOAA deployment so easy and seamless in that we could give you that complete 100% coverage without ever integrating with the SAP applications. So here, for example, as we drill down, you could see the exact users, you could see the exact transactions, the screen names, the error messages, how many times those errors are occurring. And uh, you, get, you could you know, keep drilling and get to the actual instance level detail. So that's one approach of how the No Solution is used. And in, in, it allows the companies to build what we call a service 2.0 organization. The second aspect in the support area is the ability to reduce the overall time to resolution. Um, and you know, obviously, that has a direct impact in terms of cost uh, of a support incident but also has a tremendous impact in the user satisfaction and the adoption of the application. Um, a lot of times users are not calling the support desk because they don't want to be interrogated. They, want, they don't want to go through that one hour process uh, where the support team is asking, you know, what did you do? What did you click on? The, you know, could you produce a problem? Uh, they just get very frustrated. With a NOAA solution, because we're monitoring all the users all the time across your entire enterprise, you can actually pull up what's called a user workflow for any user. So, for example, let's just pick any day here, and let's look at some of those users that had a lot of the errors. So we're going to pick on um, Howard Keel as an example here. I think he had a lot of system and user errors. And with a NOAA solution, if the user is on the phone and says, I have a problem, you don't need to ask him a lot of the common question as to 
when did the issue happen? What you know, what did you what screen did you navigate to? What transaction were you at? Are you able to reproduce the problem? With a NOAA workflow, and you can see an example here, you could see exactly for the entire day from the moment the user logged in, you could see their entire navigation path. So you see all the transactions that they access, all of the screens, um, anytime the users are getting any error messages from the application, those are captured with, with a complete context. So you can actually see that the users are getting an error messages on the create purchase order screen within an ME21 transaction. Similarly, as the users are actually executing the transaction and they're clicking on different operations, different links, buttons, all of those are captured, as well as the response metric. You know, how long did it take for that application to respond to the end user? So with this type of workflow, you know, you can imagine if you take this information, export it into Excel, attach it to your remedy ticket or solution manager ticket, you've just decreased the amount of time you're spending with the users in trying to understand the problem. You're also decreasing the incident documentation time because you actually have all this information captured. Um, if this issue becomes a, a escalated and it goes up the chain to level two, level three, maybe even development support, each one of these levels are going to want to know how to reproduce the problem. And with a NOAA solution, there's really no more notion of non-reproducible problems. So this has a direct impact into your overall support cost um, in, in maintaining uh, your enterprise applications. So that, uh, that, that was a second example in how NOAA is used in the user support area. Um, I want to touch upon a couple of other uh, areas. Um, let's talk about application support. Um, it, like any you know, enterprise application, there's usually many different types of rollouts. They could be major release upgrades, they could also be patch releases, they could also be functional upgrades, right? Maybe it's not a, uh, a complete application rollout, but maybe it's just an upgrade to certain functions within a specific module or specific uh, solution set. With a NOAA solution, because we're monitoring the entire application continuously over time, the analytics allow you to compare different periods. So for example, here we're looking at the first two weeks of April versus the last two weeks of April. And let's assume that April 15th was a change event. You rolled out, you went from maybe you know, SAP ECC 4.6 to 6.0. And you want to understand during that hyper care period, during that you know, rapid response, you know, those 30 days right after deployment, you want to understand where is the application working properly and where it's failing or where there's you know, impact to operations. Uh, and with a NOAA solution, we're able to give you that insight. So for example, here, on a, each individual transaction level, we could tell you where the response time has degraded. So here you could see some transactions where the response time has dropped by more than 50%. Now what's even more important is if you look at the number of operations, how is this application being utilized, you could see a significant drop as well. And that's very common. As the application performance degrades, then the users stop using the application. And then, of course, that raises the question, you know, what are the users doing? Did, are they doing a, you know, did they find a workaround? Are they just not using the application at all? Um, and that uncovers a lot of adoption issues during that deployment and during that, the, you know, the post-go-live uh, uh, time. Now, what's also interesting is that NOAA also gives the support team a lot of insight. So, not only can we tell you that there is a performance issue on a specific transaction, we can actually drill down very deep and tell you on individual screen level where that response time is occurring and even on each individual operation. So you could see here specific operations that are actually taking a you know, performance hit after the upgrade. Um, and this type of period versus period analysis is really critical, especially for customers, you know, for for companies that have a lot of cyclical type of usage in, for example, financial modules where you know you have a lot of month-end activity or quarter-end activity that only occurs during those periods, it's important for you to actually compare different month-end periods and different quarter-end periods so you can actually get you know similar type of metrics. So there's a lot of use cases for the, for this type of analysis. And really for the first time, customers now have an objective concrete baseline as to what is the norm for performance within any application uh, component. Um, I want to touch on 
one last use case, and that is uh, the training. And of course, training is important because you know studies show over and over again that the better the, the, the better trained users, uh, the 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 less uh, you know support they need, the less issues they need, the, the less issues they submit, uh, um, and the less uh, super user time uh, is required. And the challenges that we're seeing in training is that you know historically training has always been role based, and role based training. There's a lot of inefficiencies in that, in you know, especially when it comes to a refresher training. Most of the times, users do not need to cover all of the modules uh, that are assigned to their role. They actually just need to um, be, you know, trained on a specific subset of functions that they're actually uh, struggling with. And the, the, the challenge, of course, is the insight. How do you know where are the users struggling? Where can I focus my training dollars? How do I make sure that I get the biggest return for my training investment? And with a NOAA solution, companies are actually changing their entire training methodology by creating targeted use-based uh, training. So for example, here we're looking at the top user-related errors within my application, everything from you know problems in the material management and issues in master data problems, um, you know, invalid user input, for example, and very quickly, I could identify which departments, for example, are experiencing the highest degree of errors. And then within each department, I could very quickly target and identify what are the top you know, three errors here that are responsible for maybe you know, 70, 80 percent of my errors. And instead of sending these users to you know, training classes that span sometimes days or you know, e-learning classes that are hours long, you could create very simple lunch and learns and tackle these specific individual errors and get the biggest return for my training investment. The same thing, for example, uh, based you know if you if you look at the NOAA data based on other attributes of the user, and the user attributes is an important component of the NOAA data model. Um, all of the metrics that are being reported can be represented based on the different properties of the users including, for example, department, manager, position, site. So here, for example, I could quickly see that there are two sites that are responsible for almost 50% of my errors. So if I have a very limited training staff and I just went, you know, I just did a rollout and I need to figure out where to focus my training team on, I could quickly identify two sites, maybe send a couple of training people on site and actually get the biggest return for my training dollars because I could actually remove a lot of these issues from circulation. So this is another example, and there's a lot more use cases besides training, a lot of uh, use cases in process efficiency, um, 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 uh, user efficiency, um, and we you know, can definitely cover that uh, in follow-up demos, and you can contact your account manager, and we can follow up uh, additional sessions.